the next speakers in our Founders panel. Our moderator for this session is none other than Tanya Holland, known for her inventive take on modern soul food as well as comfort classics. Tanya Holland is the executive chef and the owner of Brown Sugar Kitchen Restaurant in Oakland. She's also the author of two cookbooks, the host of television series, Melting Pot, and was also a contestant on Top Chef. Joining her in the conversation are two passionate and spirited food entrepreneurs, Kai Norte, the founder of Kube Ice Cream that makes some delicious creamy coconut milk goodness, is a big hit with the consumers. Jeff Chu, who is a restaurant owner at Wedge Hub in Oakland, is also the founder of Something Better Foods, whose products include delicious plant-based meats, chicken and ribs. I've had the pleasure of savoring them at some food events and personally can attest to the goodness of those products. I now hand the virtual stage over to these inspiring entrepreneurs. Welcome. Hello, Tanya. Hi, everybody. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you for here, being here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how many people know, I've, I've said this before, but um, everybody thinks I love to cook, but I'm actually really passionate about entrepreneurship. I love um, meeting other entrepreneurs and founders and having a uh, preliminary discussion with uh, Kai and Chef Chu. I discovered that, you know, they have such amazing passion for their work, what they want to create. And I think, um, you know, what, they, what they're doing, they're, they're so um, intelligent and diligent about uh, their businesses. And um, I want to do whatever I can to help them uh, stay successful. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Yeah. You're likewise. Absolutely. Great. So where do we start? Um, we had a lot of good conversations um, about, um, you know, the challenges really around funding and, um, you know, meeting investors who see us for who we are and, you know, aren't trying to take advantage of, you know, our intellectual property and what we've created. And, um, you know, I, I want to give the, the two featured entrepreneurs here the opportunity to, to tell their story a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and start with Kai. Just take a couple minutes to talk about, um, you know, yeah, your journey. Is. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. And thank you, Kelly and Rodney and everyone <laughs> for being here um, and setting the stage. Uh, because it's really powerful to hear a lot of what the actual founders are going through. And not just us, not just Jack Chu and us, there's, there's so many more. Our stories, you know, are amplified through other stories and there's a lot of connections. I just want to introduce myself again. I'm Kai Norte, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kube Nice Cream and Kube Nice Cream. Kube actually means the coconut in the Chui language from Ghana. My husband and co-founder is Ganyan. And we were super inspired by being in Ghana. We created, you know, coconut ice cream from, you know, just having real coconuts. And so I really want to make it clear clear that you know this started through necessity this started because i'm lactose intolerant my husband and co-founder is lactose intolerant and has a ton of allergies and we realized that all the coconut cream on the market you know all the coconut ice cream was imported imported with synthetic chemicals that people do not discuss synthetic chemicals called sodium metabisulfite a sulfite a bleaching chemical that causes gastrointestinal and hormonal issues okay so there's issues with the current food system. It's broken. And I said, you know what? We need to create a better food system. We need to have real cold pressed coconut cream. It inspired us to create our own patent pending equipment. And so I've made this incredible coconut ice cream that people love and that people want it. And people really see that Kube is really leading the next inclusive and regenerative economy that is addressing the most critical issues of our time. We're, we're addressing the critical issues of restorative economics, okay? food justice, racial and gender equity, climate justice, and mass incarceration. It is bigger than just the great coconut ice cream. It's bigger than just, you know, authentic, real, cold-pressed coconut ice cream. It's, it's about restoring value. It's about restoring health. You know, it's about restoring dignity back to historically oppressed people and diverse communities and ice cream enthusiasts who are the allergen population, right? The health we have a, a triple bottom line, essentially. Yes. You know, which I, is yes. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yes. And so what I've found in the journey, yes. And the triple bottom line is key because we're saying we can make profit and have social impact. A lot of folks are coming home. People are coming home, returning citizens, formerly incarcerated folks. They need jobs and they're often overlooked and dismissed in the same way that black founders are often overlooked and dismissed. Right. And I just really want to put it out there that a lot of folks have asked me investors, investors who own resorts, have asked me to come teach their staff how to make this fresh, right? But not with co-ownership, with an extractive model, with yeah. a massive exploitation model to say, well, why don't you teach them? Um, why don't you? And I say, well, wait a minute now, that's a, that's a conflict of interest. I'm really focusing on building my manufacturing here, right? Folks need jobs here too. If you want to yeah. talk about co-ownership, that's another conversation and we can have that, right? They don't want to talk about that. They want, they want me to, they'll tell me, oh, you can't be a manufacturer. Oh, really? Because Kube Journey is about, is about self-determination. It's about Sorry, collective just, determination. Uh, in Sorry, go ahead. You. No, it's okay. I just want to say a couple statements that were made in the last conversation that I think sum up what your experience and what I have experienced too is that yes. uh, people of, uh, of color, black, indigenous, low-income folks, we, uh, we lose so much time and money constantly proving our worth to those with power. And that is, you know, that yes. just took me, I mean, I can't, I could, yes. the list is long how much money I've lost and time, even though it seems time. like I've had a lot of success. Um, I've, you know, been taken down the road with conversations, promised things, you know, and people collecting my intellectual property, um, yes. picking my brain. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, so we have to stop that. And then, you know, someone else said, we don't get the investment to increase capacity or infrastructure until we prove that we can do the work without the investment mm -hmm. in, in capital infrastructure. And again, that is so, you know, that's so exploitative, as you were saying. Right. And, yeah, it forces um, you to fall it, down. Yeah. It forces, it, it creates, it creates burnout. Like that's right. literally what you just said, I love myself so much that I'm gonna take a break when I need to take a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Because I know when I rejuvenate my spirit and when I rejuvenate myself, I have so much more to give, right? Exactly. There's only two of us doing manufacturing. We're doing yeah. the job. Let of me give, let me give Chef Chu a chance. To it. <laughs> it's okay. I know you're totally passionate. Go ahead, Chef. Well, hello everybody. Um, it's definitely a privilege to be here. Um, tell a little about myself, my story. My real last name is Chu, C-H-E-W. As I like to always say, gonna give you something to chew on. And um, amazing story. I was actually adopted at birth. Um, my father, uh, my mother and father, my father actually was a sharecropper, uh, which obviously was a part of that exploitation from slavery, uh, post Jim, um, pretty much Jim Crow era. Um, so I saw my father, my mother, you know, this hardworking family um, being in the South. Uh, we had a lifestyle that was very, you know, very meat centric, um, you know, good soul foods, tough, tough tasted amazing. But sadly, a lot of it was, was very unhealthy. Um, and so my family members in the early 40s started coming down with lifestyle diseases, everything from diabetes, heart disease, uh, saw seeing family members go on dialysis, um, just all types of different health issues. Um, amazingly, in my personal journey, um, as I started seeing this, I got excited about eating healthy. Um, at the same time, my family began to die, a literally premature death in their, in their 50s. Um, and I actually, in 2001, became a vegan, uh, which is obviously just totally kind of crazy. Uh, there wasn't much on the market at that time. Um, being, again, growing up eating, you know, all the different soul food, a lot of meat and so forth, I, I started my own personal journey to create, you know, just different vegan food products. Got excited about plant protein before it was ever even popular. In 2007, developed my first proprietary process on how to texturize different types of beans and grains to create a very meat-like texture. And I call it today a better chew. Uh, it stands for better texture, better taste, better it's chew. Says it looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but guess what? It ain't chicken. It's crispy on the outside and it's white in the middle. It's delicious. Um, so since then, I started a company, went to the restaurant industry, similar to you, uh, Miss yeah. Tanya. Um, and eventually in 2017, I uh, started my company to start manufacturing the plant protein um, with the mission of democratizing healthy food, um, specifically plant proteins and communities of color, um, fighting for food justice, social justice and equity.
Um, and, you know, we definitely, as we're going to continue talking about the investment side and my experience, but that's, that's who I am. Thank you. So, yeah, you both really went into this to solve like real uh, personal issues around diet, uh, dietary, um, you know, restrictions and then create opportunities for others, which I just think is incredible. And um, I want to talk about, though, you know, what happens when you go and try to have those conversations with investors? Uh, what has your, been, your experience when you're trying to scale? And, um, you know, who is investing? Where's the money coming from? Yeah. Well, I can say, you know, for our company, um, you know, we're in a very, one of the, with Kai as well, both of us are in the plant-based food space, both dairy, non-dairy, non-dairy, plant-based, non-dairy, as, as well as plant-based meats are one of the fastest growing categories in the food industry. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, there's a lot of money being invested into both of our spaces. Um, a lot of the money that we started as we started raising money was a lot of venture capital money. Um, and it was very challenging for me as, as an entrepreneur to really grab my mind around under, uh, the VC model, not to say that it's not, not a way to invest or not a way to receive money. But the model as I was being, you know, learn, learning about it was that, hey, um, you know, we have to, you know, take on all this money and with the expectation that we have to sell or exit our company within a five or seven year period with return structures that are like 20x to 50x. Um, and, it, and it defied, again, my father being a sharecropper. You know, his whole life, his first hurrah, hurrah moment for him is when he bought his first piece of land. He had ownership. And it was very difficult for me to put myself in a position receiving money that was very exploit, ex exploitive, exploit, ex exploitive and how was this approach with these very amazing, crazy returns that I would have to literally sell the company that I worked for so many years to create. Wow. And, and that was a very difficult moment. So the ownership structure was for me is as a black founder, when we look at having a, a business ownership becomes very important so to get Absolutely. money that forces me to have to sell or exit within a short time frame um was very against the very psyche of who i was and why i was doing the right. business in the first place so right. now finding investors that actually thought along that line became the journey it was like most investors that i spoke to was like when are you going to exit what's your exit strategy what's the acquisition yeah. model that's the first and, question and that's so the first question. and so i'm saying to myself like i don't want to exit i want to grow a company yeah. for my community for my people right. i want to be a part and of my community you want to be able to establish some generational wealth right? yes exactly and that that's something that we aspire to so right. the financial models didn't add up and it was different people um, Nina Robinson was one that I, that worked with me early on in our in our in our process yeah. that helped us to think about some of those different ways of uh, investment. Mm -hmm. Slow Money with Arno, who actually is one of the founders of of, of Slow Money and Food Funded. Um, you know, he was also another person and that, that invested, but that's thought about it. You know, this a different model and a different approach. Um, so I think it takes investors that understand the psyche of a of a black founder and and are looking more at a patient structure opposed to this, you know, you know, this flip, you know, you put all this money in with these crazy expectations and, you know, and, and that doesn't, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't work for tech, but for food industries, that's not even typically how food industries even grow. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so. Completely different and um, yeah, that has to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Right. I wanted to also add in too, um, for me, I worked with a lot of girls, teenage girls on probation and connecting them to restorative models and rehabilitative opportunities. This is something a lot of folks don't know that I used to work in the juvenile justice and policy and direct services uh, for about four to five years in Oakland. And I could see that they were having a hard time getting jobs. And I went to law school. Law school was not for me. It was fighting the system. I wanted to fight, but I didn't really want to fight. What I really wanted to do was rebuild, right? And I'm vegan now, but before I was vegan, I found out I was lactose intolerant. And I realized that 90% of Africans of the diaspora and Asians of the diaspora are 90% lactose intolerant. Indigenous folks are 80% lactose intolerant. Latinx folks are like 52% lactose intolerant. So 80% of the world is lactose intolerant, yet, there are no black vegan ice cream manufacturers around the world. I'm looking in Ghana as well. I'm looking in, in the whole continent of Africa. We're talking about a huge system that has definitely extracted from us that does not want to see us in leadership. And so I have found as well, like Chef Chu, folks like Arne, Kristen Hall, Fermia Capital. I mean, could go on from people who are doctors to construction workers that are like, you know what? 
you're going to rebuild the future. I believe in you. You have integrity. You walk with integrity and they see the joy. They see that we are working, you know, are putting in our due diligence, right? So I've found those social impact investors, but it's very, very challenging to find other accredited investors when you have, when you're in manufacturing, right? You have, cap, you need, you need, uh, a, you need land. Absolutely. You're very capital intensive, right? You need, you need equipment. So we've put in our own money. I've tried not to take out so many loans and no personal guarantees because I feel like that's how they want to break us. They want to get us. They want to constantly take our, I'm not letting you take my house. My child lives in my house, right? <laughs> so I have to, I have to, and I, I'm not mad if you did a personal guarantee. I understand the stress. I understand, like we're proving ourselves. We're constantly proving ourselves. And again, this is a fight to redefine what the future looks like. I'm not That's asking for their permission, right? right? <laughs> yes, like we're doing it anyway. And, and we're selling online. We're selling at Museum of Ice Cream. They want us back in there. It sold so well there. Um, Whole Foods is asking us to be there. So what is, what is, is asking you, us to be what there. What is holding you up the most right now as far as growth? Capital. I'm, I'm, I'm raising capital right now. Right now I'm selling preferred, non-voting preferred stock. So yep. if you don't like that, you can't vote. Right. I don't want, I don't want investors or lucrative wealthy investors saying, oh, I'm going to put my friend on your board, you yeah. know, um, and direct your flow. No, you can sit on my <laughs> advisory board. Is that the same for you? Capital right now? Yeah, you, um, yeah we are still raising. Um, you know, honestly, we, we also came to a point, we have raised money. So we, we've, we've been fortunate that we've raised money. We'd obviously need more money. What we've come to also understand is that one is getting capital, but on another side is also creating a business that has, that has healthy margins. Um, yes, and that's so, key for us too. Yeah, and so, I, you know, one of the things I always say is that, you know, sometimes as a black, inv a black founder in a business, you have to build a ladder before you can actually start climbing the ladder. So as a question is, we know that getting capital is going to be difficult. That's that, we know that, right? So that's just, just the reality of being black, right? Um, so one thing I would say is that we have to also, what can we also do for ourselves? And then when we, when we do get to the table, an investor has no excuse to say that this business is not fundable. Um, right. So one thing that we came to realize is that we also have to be the best. You know, mama always said to me, put your best suit on. Um, so one of the things we came to understand in our business um, was that creating a model that had healthy margins from the onset. And the, and the VC model is focused so much on growth, 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 growth. Right. We came to recognize and say, no, nah, we're not going to focus on growth, growth, growth. We're going to focus on a healthy margin. And with that, now we become in a sense where we are now bankable um, and we can do that responsibly where we're not over leveraging ourselves. And we also can yeah. now speak to investment investors and say, look, look at our numbers, look at our, look at our velocity, look at our, our business. You can't say that we're not fundable. Um, yeah. And so I think there's, right. a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a dual process in that. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. And for us too, we always, we're always doing the margin gross profit margin analysis. This is why I am selling online and people come and pick up at my commercial kitchen. I must obtain all the whole gross profit margin mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's only two of us doing the work of eight people, right? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And so it's so important when I, before, when we tested our product, when we did surveys, we did gross profit margin analysis the whole time. I had mentors to help me with that the whole time. I have a CFO who's helping us with projections. We, we, we're constantly, and so there's no excuse. There's no excuse. The people want Kube ice cream. They're, they're like, look, could you just get it into the stores? I, if you're sitting next to that other, other brand, well, we want that. that. Somebody wanted to know if they could get it in Spain. <laughs> I know. I enjoy It'll be global. We have plans to be global. Night. They're delicious. Thank you. I can't wait to I'm take uh, tests. To taste and I'm coming. Okay, and, coming. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. Probably, I might, bring, might surprise you today. I'm Thank coming you. to Oakland a little later. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I know that, you know, this is the future of food. These, you know, alternatives to what we've been consuming, uh, you know, for sustainability, is also, you know, not just dietary, but sustainability. We have to do these things. Um, and I appreciate both of your contributions. Um, Thank you. <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm not sure uh, what our, our timeline is left. Let me see if I look at the clock. Um, but what, um, tell me something that about your businesses that people might not think that um, 
is a challenge. So not the financial part, um, you know. Yeah. Um, the manufacturing. Yeah, go ahead. Shoot. Yeah. You know, one of the things I would say is that, um, you know, like, like the one person I saw in the comments say co-packing versus, uh, you know, uh, you know, self-manufacturing. Um, you know, that's a very operationally, you know, manufacturing is a very difficult business. Um, there's a lot of details that go into that. So having, like Kai said, you know, getting a, a great team is also super critical because there's so many hats. I mean, food safety is a very, if you're going to manufacture yourself, you know, having food safety models and food safety right. processes, HACCP awesome. plans, all these different details. Yep. Um, you, one of the things you have to have is have a team. Um, so finding a team that's number one, as Kai said, is that, you know, we deal with a lot of intellectual property. So you want to have a trustworthy team. Um, so finding team members that you, you can trust. Have a good attorney also. Yeah, you got to have a, a good attorney. Yeah, we have an attorney. Um, we have that. Yeah. You have. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're all set up. Like we're 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 crossing our t's, dotting our i's, and we're still not getting the money. That's yeah. what I'm. That's why I have. I have a. I have a manufacturer. I'm sorry, an advisor with 35 years of manufacturing experience. He's like, you know, you got to get you. You need your own facility. Thank God, there's like somebody else that believes in us too. It's yeah. wonderful to see yeah. that somebody says you have an excellent product. People want this. You need your own facility. Let me help you figure out how you do that, and let's get that asset plan in place. That's yeah. wonderful. But we're we're still on the journey. I'm go ahead, Shepshu. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all that's all love, Kai. <laughs>